Okay, so today I will be continuing on with uh, Autogen from XML Spec Files. Uh, previously was cleanup and then compare functions. And this time we get into the real interesting part, which is to do YAML. Um, reading and writing YAML strings, basically. Uh, typically files, but it could be anything that's YAML based. So I already have an implementation of YAML previously, um, but I haven't liked it so much because it's, I, it's relied a little bit too much on templating. And there's like four functions, which like I can, I, I think I can actually simplify this. Like I've spent quite some time, you know, how long? Nearly two years with this current form of YAML functionality. And I honestly don't use much of it at all. Like I, it's almost always read required and, or read, it's always, almost always read optional and write required, like all the time, all over the place. So I don't really need four functions. I don't need, I really don't think I need four sets of functions. I don't think I need the, the function LE or the test cases for four sets of functions. I can probably really redu you know, reduce them just to, to reading writing. And that's it. And just use that paradigm moving forward for binary and any other forms of serialization or deserialization. But to begin with, uh, what I'm going to do, to begin with, I'm actually going to start with uh, the XML, sorry, the uh, Python autogen from XML. Um, <clears throat> because if I'm losing the ability to do templating, if I want to like reduce it, reduce that so I can actually, uh, more easily, uh, interact with, no interface with other, other languages or like our C FFI, I can't rely on this anymore. I should really do something more where it's like, you know, YAML write underscore UN32 or string or whatever, like all the, all the individual types rather than act, than relying on just this nebulous one. And then just hoping that the type system underneath is always going to figure it out correctly. Cause this is only really going to be super useful. I mean, I could wrap these functions in other functions, but then like, yeah, no, 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 that's not gonna, that's not gonna be as fun or, uh, I don't, I don't think it's as required really, or should be done at all. Just reduce, reduce the, inner, reduce the, um, surface. So you have four functions, two functions, maybe increase the functionality, maybe not, whatever. I don't know. But to begin with struct yaml.python. Let's grab the very basics up at the top. Great. I'm going to do that. We're going to roll on down to find process. Member, okay. It's going to be returning two strings, uh, read and write. Going to go on down. So we, this is still, yeah, we're still going to be using this part at least. Rolling on down to set up, parse, reading, Function macros down to main declarations. Okay, that's going to be a bit different. So there's not a, there's more than one function to begin with. Okay, so this is the this is the point where we I gotta start and actually right yeah. <clears throat> so that that that. So what we have we'll do read and write. So YAML read blah it's going to be is it still c++ it has to be because yaml cpp is you know c++ so standard string const and node name i believe that's how this already goes like it's going to be mostly the same it's going to be a little bit different. The same, but different. Put it that way. Um, and 
and then we're going to have to have type. Type, no, no, uh, yes, yeah, so the type is one uh, and data. Got to have something similar for the other side for writing. Hmm. So this is going to be the node name. Uh, the data is going to be here in the middle. That's a const. Const and data node it's not const yeah it's basically that that for the first iteration like i do want to do this but that's a bit more difficult to begin with i'll just make sure like if it's zero or otherwise blank don't write it out i think it's probably best So we write those out, function macros, the type, anything else? I don't think, uh, so not for that. Okay. Then we're going to have to go through the same thing for, do I need control members? I don't think I do, but I do want to skip them. Maybe, maybe. Hmm. Oh, wait, actually, no, I need something else for the cases where there are no, yeah, the group translator, this thing, there are going to be cases where when reading, ah, oh, actually, would I? So right now, I could either, if I, okay, <clears throat> I'm wondering whether or not I should like process, when, I, when there are resource IDs or entity IDs or any other type of IDs, do I do the group translation as I'm reading it in via YAML or just read in the raw data and then have like another function that you then like call group translator and translate the already kind of created struct. And then of course have much like in compare or cleanup, it'll recursively go down to whatever other types internally, internal of that, that would also need to be converted or have, you know, group translated, uh, groups translated. Because that's the thing, right? If I do it here, it's going to be like some functions. Either I add group translator to everything, which is, oh, that's a lot. Or either all functions or I have some kind of ability to find out whether or not it has IDs and then sometimes have it in the front in the declaration <sighs> but then i'd have to do the same thing for yaml i'd have to do the same thing for binary and any other type of serialization i would have to have this weird appendix kind of thing going on at the the read points not the write points or i just have it as, as separate functions that allows you to do group translations for ids id you know yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. What I'm thinking, thinking for sure is to have that as a separate function for sure. So yeah, yeah. No, no group translation will be happening here. It'll be something. So w w how this works is it's going to basically read it. Okay. So this is already like reading the definition of something. So it'll just read it and then down here somewhere between this after you read, but before you use 
create the resource, create info, you do the translation as a separate thing. And then you can also reuse that in a bunch of other places. Yes. Espe yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because when you're... Um... No, no, that's a terrible idea. No. Yeah, keep it separate. <clears throat> so that's, you know, several minutes of me going off on a tangent. <clears throat> okay, I need a drink. Uh, BRB. Okay. Um, can close that. Close that. Uh, construct compare over here. Okay. Back down to this category, not type. Type, false, blah, 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 blah. Do I need control members? Uh, because there'd be like what number? No, 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 because control members. Not explicitly. I would, I would, I want, I want to know what they are because I want to skip them. Because in the case of like a multi array or whatever, control members will, in YAML will be determined whether or not the object actually exists, and there's other ways of determining the length of the number of objects in there. Instead, <clears throat> yeah. So I want to know them, but it's to skip them. Process regular members. So it's going to be something like this. If in that, so uh, we're going to have what? Read string. Process member. It's going to be what member member name. Anything else? So then it'd be like what? Um, read string plus equals new read. Write string plus equals new write. Then we're going to go down to the print section. Starting with the function macro, we'll do just basically copy paste from here. We'll do that. Great. That's going to be like that. And then we'll have a right one down below. Much like, I actually already have kind of like something like this for Vulcan. Specifically like the actual Kronos Vulcan, not my specific Vulcan stuff. Like these, right? Yeah, no. That's a test. BK struct, yeah. This is kind of auto-generated through and this bit weird yeah not great um okay you know what let's just have a look at the source i'll just kind of base it off of that so when we're doing reads hmm. read optional okay we got this we're reading Otherwise, we return false. Okay. Then we'd have new data. So let's type uh, new data. Do I want to do equals that or it might just be better if I just do mem set. And new data for what? Zero. C. 
size of one. I'd rather do that just in case it's not, and just in case the compiler's trying to like leave some weird gaps in that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll leave it like that. So we got to try stuff, stuff, stuff. So inside of here, we're going to have number two, which is going to be the content, the right content. Yeah, catch. Oh, yeah, exception. And e. We're going to have, it can't just be that. Just in case there's a node name, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, else the, the cleanup function. Uh, the cleanup function, because some structures, data types may not have a cleanup function. So that is kind of variable. So about that, if <clears throat> node name dot empty, we have this where it's going to throw e directly. Otherwise, throw throw yano exception node name plus that plus e dot what? Okay. <clears throat> Otherwise, no, 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 that's part of the exception bit. Data equals new data. Return true. Writing. <clears throat> so we have a YAML node that we're writing. Back up by one. Try, we're opening up that. Try, we're going to try to one, two, three, four. Yeah, and that's it. I don't think we need anything else. Catch. Basically the same thing, right? Same thing here. Otherwise, if dot empty, Otherwise, node for node is right now. Okay. <clears throat> and then we have the formats, right? Uh, type. We have two is the read string. We have the cleanup function, if there is one. And then we have the write. Cleanup function is going to be just determined right for, and it's going to be based on whether it was a, a complex type, I think. So if doc common dot is complex type times XML spec roots. Otherwise, it's just empty, like that. Where the cleanup function equals Cleanup underscore type new data. No, pointer to new data. New line <clears throat> dot format dot type. Okay, that'll cover that. Okay. Processing of each member. Return 
returning the strings. Um, okay, so one thing I definitely probably do have is I need to format the, uh, the, the member names. So this is probably more like, you know, descriptor count. So this is probably like, sorry, not that. Descriptor count, descriptor type. Is this like a, um, somewhere in here will be a for loop, yeah. So this is probably, this is called P bindings in the, in the, in the, um, the data type. But I formatted it to be kind of um, nicer looking to be put into human readable YAML files. And so I probably want to do that here as well. So I need to create like a format name, uh, which I'll probably split into another function. Human friendly name for name or member name. Uh, what, what am I going to do? I am going to, like, how am I going to, <laughs> so something like this. I want to convert it into something like color, just like maybe snake case, blend CI. Or can I do color blend CI? Getting, whether or not I get rid of the P at the start is like if, okay, I need like a Boolean that says like, if this is a pointer, basically. So I know whether or not I just remove the first character, basically. Then, before each, when I could just do that, that'd be easy. That'd be kind of mostly human readable. Is that human readable enough? Snake case of pass case of Pascal, something like that. What do I actually currently use? I, it's just flags, flags. Input rate. I have pass. I have um, mixed case or whatever. You know what? I'll actually go with snake case. I think a bit more complex, but it should work. Is pointer and name if the first character is P and name. One dot is upper, just in case they're the first mem the technically second member is not uppercase, so it's lowercase, so it's part of a longer name. It's just a, it may be a pointer, but it may be named weirdly. No, 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 no. no. If it's a if it's a pointer, it should always have p p just that yeah that just that name equals what name skip the first character go. Like that. Then formatted name equals. So I'm going to strip up, strip off the first character. Then I'm going to actually go through like four. Um, how do I do by number? Just I in range. Yeah, ranges range of the length of name. Oh, I need to know whether I'm I'm not. Uh, I need to know whether or not I'm in like uppercase mode or lowercase mode, because if there's multiple uppercases like that SCI uh, that I has from State Create Info, then all three of those need to be grouped together. I can't put an underscore in front of each of them. 
Otherwise, you know, under, S, underscore S, underscore C. No, no, no. No. Bad idea. Snake case is also probably a bit more universal than Pascal case. Or it'll cover more. So, yeah, 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 that still makes sense. That makes sense still to do. So, what I want to do, if I is zero, then it's always lowercase. Always lowercase. Continue. Or I could do L L6, right? Yeah. L if it's uppercase. Then I need to okay, this is where I need something like it says whether or not something is uppercase. Oh, I also need like if this beginning of the string is like P and then has like PID or something like that. I need to, yeah. Otherwise, I'll, yeah. Hmm. Okay, if name zero dot is upper. We're in upper chars. People. One true, true or false? Am I in an uppercase? What mode am I in? Uppercase or not? Yeah. Ah. <sighs> If not upper chars, then we want what format name to add an underscore. Otherwise, that's true. And we want to character otherwise upper charge is false something like that can I get that oh yeah return name Something like that. Let's say false for the first case, and then we'll do true later just afterwards. So docs struct yaml, struct yaml. Like that. Uh, da, 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 type dash t. That did not work. Okay. P binding SCI and ID and is linked. Hmm. Uh, that doesn't work very well, does it? Dang, that is not 
Okay, does it work for the case I actually care about? Binding SCI. Yeah, yeah, okay, it will. Cool. So I've got a formatted name. Now for the pre uh, stuff, this. Oh, I already had it here. <laughs> uh, temp string. So this equals that, and that also equals that. I'm not doing. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So again, I'm not doing double indirection. Get out of here with that, that's not happening. I think, okay, I kind of put these together because it was simple enough, I think, but this is not going to be anywhere near as simple, I don't think, so I'll, I'll split the cases up. For like pointers with, um, Oh, no, first of all, <clears throat> I actually need to deal with the string case. LF that and type name is char and that then we're going on with a case where okay. Stop. So we already have that. This is a new line. If <clears throat> standard string of what zero one zero. Okay, I got a type name. I got the member name. And I need the formatted name. So member name, I'm reading it. So I need to call YAML read string. This is a very special one. It'll be inside of that. It's going to be two for the problem added name. It's the read node. And so we're putting in that member. Turns true if it reads something already. So then we go no data dot that equals. It's not a string or it's not a standard string. It's going to be a char star string type. So I need to. Uh, I don't even need type name. I know exactly what it is. It's a char. Zero, 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 one, number name, formatted name, and that's it. Malik of uh, one dot size plus one for the null character at the end. We're just going to mem copy. Star of new data dot zero. From zero dot C string. And it's going to be dot size plus one for the null character.
something, something right, right stream. Are we going to be one deep? No, we're going to be two deep, aren't we? Because we're going to be inside of a uh, try catch. Get out of there. There we go. If data dot zero not empty. So if it's not empty. This will be just Caesar, right? Oh no, no, not dot empty. It'll just be because it's a pointer. If if pointer, yeah, we'll write string. Uh, one mm, straight to the right node. No, no, it's the data from zero right node. Then we're going to go for the multi-member types. Or will we? We'll, we'll just kind of leave it there for the moment. I want to see if I can do struct YAML on that. What, what does this look like? This looks like nothing because it's dead. I don't have is pointer, which is you know if does that work? Yeah. Ah, uh, that looks terrible. So, that's too deep by one. Somehow. Oh. Do that, right? Whatever, we'll just do this. I'll get it fancier looking in a moment. Okay, start. This is deeper. No, this. Okay, now this is not deep enough. This is correct, right? Writing string, that'll be, is that, either that's a standard string or a string view? What do you string view? And this read p string, that's terrible. But that's entirely within this um, scope, so that's fine. P string equals char malloc and that. This will be cleaned up by the cleanup function. Copy the data in. Do I want to do string copy? Not really. I could do string copy. If I already have the size, it's probably safer. Yeah. Okay. Now, LF. <sighs> Exists, then we're doing multi, 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 uh, an array. That looks English enough. So we're too deep and we are reading. So first of all, if 
We need to see if the node exists. The, the, the node we're looking for specifically exists. So zero node equals read node uh, one, formatted name. That's kind of a format. Number name, formatted name. Formatted string. We'll do that. If it equals that, and the node actually exists, so we'll no. Yeah. Okay. Node. And the node exists. Get rid of this extra white space. Then we have to go in new data dot one because member okay this will be member length so I need to set this 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 control member to be the same uh, size same as the number of nodes here. Same as that. Set the associated control member, which are always lengths. There's nothing like, there's no true false control member. Not right now. If you data. One is greater than zero. I mean, I guess you could have, yeah, because you can have it in a re uh, uh, specified by having no members. That's true, like an empty array. If it's greater than zero, then we're actually going to be doing something with it. If that, then I need new data dot two, which is the type name for mem member member name. Now I need to malloc uh, based off the type name star. This is going to be C++, so it's going to complain if I don't do this. Uh, one times size of type. Each between I and that. Now we go through each member. Subread node equals the node that we're on. Arrayed into it. If we fail to read this for whatever reason, then we're going to throw an exception. YAML read the type. That's not going to work, is it? Because I'm going to have types such as info position, which is this. That's not a valid character to have in a function name. The, the double colon for this or a vector or whatever. Now I have every intention of removing those eventually, but I haven't yet. So I need, in addition to the formatted member name, that we need a formatted type name which should be just okay if, if you have double colons replace them with underscores and call it a day so
Yes. Okay. Type. And we got that. So that's going to be four. Uh, so it was that subread node. And the new data dot two. And that. And that's this is working off of references. So I can just give that and it should. Find its way around. Okay, that, and we got to throw. If we couldn't read it, if we failed to read node. What's the name of it? Three? No, zero, zero. a lot of stuff. And then we go to the other side of, of writing this this stuff uh, out. All right, so if data new uh, no data dot control member, right? No. Yes, only writing out if it's if it's actually got stuff. So if that subwrite node for i is t i equals zero i is less than data dot zero for each member. This node demo writes one. That's going to be the formatted type name. Data dot for that array number. So that's now the member name. Node, it's going into the list node. Subwrite node is going to have it pushed back. Uh, I a list node. And then at the end, write node, uh, whatever it was, three, I guess. I don't have this yet. Formatted name. Member name formatted member name equals the sub right node. Nope. Oh, right string. Encountered an extra. There it is. Curly. Okay. For the multi member for writing, if it's greater than zero, write, go through each list node, write it out, add it to the end, and then put that. Okay, yeah. So that same thing here. Write that, yeah. Write that, okay. Mm -hmm. What about reading? Um, uh, multi VK struct node, multi VK, blah, 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 blah. Set the control member, read the actual data. So it's going to throw, I uh, got a couple extra lines. Okay. Well, on the way. LF, what are the other cases? I just have a random star in there. In or rather, I have 
that. Okay, read string, too deep, if. Actually, that makes, that is a pair, okay, you know what, no. That because what we're going to do up here is we're going to create a temporary member. This is where the compare starts to come in. For the, oh no, no. Maybe. I should be doing comparisons up here too. Hmm. Okay, you know what? I'll. I'll add the comparisons from this point on and I'll retrofit back later. <sighs> Dang it. I knew it. there's always something you forget. So, okay, in this case, we're starting with mem uh, type with a temporary member name equals blank. Then we're going to do YAML read. Oh, no, no, yeah. No, this is blank. No, but on the right side I would, yeah. YAML read. Uh, so that's the formatted name. Okay, dot. Type name. Formatted member name. Formatted type name. That's the second one. Uh, we're reading the formatted member name. In the read node, we're going to be putting it into that. And if that returned true, we have stuff. So we're going to go new data dot one, two, three. Member name. That equals, it's externally held, so I need to malloc. So I need the type name. And we set that. Move or copy the data over. Only allocate after you already have the data. This kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could allocate first. No, I can't, because uh, I can't do that for this. I won't do it for this either. Yeah. Like that. I want to read, uh, sorry, write. If. If this is not null, so we've got member name, then we're going to go through the process of writing this, which is going to be YAML writes formatted type name, formatted member name, uh, nope, get out of here. Did not mean to do that. What we're pointing to, so data dot zero to the right node. Member name. Okay, so sorry, no. One, two.
Okay, if this, write this, duplicate struct. Okay, great. Same thing on the read side. Do malloc. And then we uh, move the data over. Okay, great. Is there an LF or is this just an else? Because all that's left now is inline data. Um, I'm not doing a deep compare of that, am I? Hmm. Dang it. Uh, fine. I'll start the deep the comparisons now. We only have inline types to go. Got to read. And it's going to be a case of just jabble and read whatever it is. Formatted type, the formatted member name. And the member name. And that's it. Because, yeah, it, reading is easy in this case. We're just, if it's there, we're re reading it. What's the real logic is when we're trying to determine whether or not we actually want to write it. So, what we got? Formatted type name, we got the formatted member name, and then we got the member name. Okay. Do we want do do we want to write or not? That is the question. So I need to figure out the comparison. Right? Write string. It's gonna be a question of like if. If comparison, whatever it is, it's maybe a comparison function, maybe it's just a, like a plain old data type, so like it's just like a not equals or whatever. In YAML, write type, formatted type for formatted location name, uh, member, me, uh, member name. Getting a bit tired, I'm starting to slur my, my words a little bit. That's not good. Free member name and the node, the right node. Fair function. Now to, de to determine the compare function. Um, it's going to be by default data dot whatever not equal zero otherwise it's going to be the case of like if dot common dot is struct if it's a structure so it's not a plain old data it's a structure of some sort then we need the fancy, oh no, 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 no. Yes, we have this, and we're also gonna to have to do that special function for the ID type to merge them together, right? Because it's a group ID and an, and an index ID. Hmm, yeah, okay. Spec roots, great. If it's a struct type, then the function equals if I'm not comparing against anything right now, so it'll be. Type and 
is blank. Not compare uh, type. Oh no, not type. Formatted type. And data pointer of dot dot that dot two and and TMP. So that's going to fit inside of the if. If this is in if it's one of the ID types, so we're gonna to have to go through a special function for that. Compare function no. Yes, yes I do. Needs to be compared to that. And I have the GLM types as well. That equals, uh, I need to determine <sighs> if data dot member name not equals the type, which is going to be a blank dot format. Member, okay, multi, okay. Reading is simple for these types, that's great. So writing, if it's a pointer, yeah, if it's not equal zero, not equal zero, not equal zero. Pointer, multi, uh, complex struct type, okay. Or simple struct. That versus cost, okay. Pointer, complex struct, okay. Uh, I don't have anything for the VK types, but I would be including a Vulkan docs XML to, for that case. Okay, I think that's 90% of what we need here. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all, I also need to start with the, the functions for like the basic types, the standard string, the uints, the GLM stuff. I need to do that. So, I guess I'll just start right down here. Fo YAML include uh, plain old data dot HPP.
Oh, look, it's the sea header. Not. Uh, get more of a drink, so BRB. Okay. We've got strings. We're going to have to have. What we're going to have is. Um, oh. And that, the export back. Oh, this is a lot of very basic items, and these are only the declarations too, not the definitions. So, define a YAML pod for plain old data declaration, which includes the type. What's going to happen is it's going to be for YAML export. Name YAML. and then the type and similar for the writing. And what's going to happen is that we're going to be doing a bunch of declarations and then we're going to undefine this out here. So we're going to have that for Boolean. Then we're going to have int, int 8, int 16, int 32, int 64. String. That's not going to fly for this part. Nor would unsigned int fly because it's got a space, not an underscore. So split this into two. So we've got type. Um, I don't know. X Y. X is the first part that's going to be in going to here and Y. So it's going to be bool bool. And this is just going to be string, standard string. Int, 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 blah. It should cover most of the corner cases. Okay, then we want to do uints. That also means going back to this for the formatted type name. Replace spaces with underscores as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got to do float. Double uh, longs and stuff. I will add later if because I don't even I don't really bother using longs because of their somewhat ambiguous ambiguity of what they actually are. I mean, same thing really applies to int, but yeah, whatever. That's why I'm always like int eight, int sixteen, thirty two, whatever. That's what I prefer. Okay, so that's that. 
Now on the source side, pod, I need to do something similar, no doubt. So let's grab this, let's do Off to the side, let's see what I got. Do I? I do want to. I, I still need to use templating at least on inside the source, even if not on the public declaration side. Aren't I? Yes, <clears throat> yes, I will. Is there anything I want to change in this? I don't think so. So, this. this in here, same thing for. Okay. Read optional, this is going to become YAML read. That, we have the type name. Do I want to keep that? Yes, I kind of do. Okay, YAML write required, because I'm determining whether or not I want to write it from outside. Just so it's just that. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I need string is a special case, right? Would it be? No, no, it wouldn't, would it? Mm, I don't think so. Define an instantiation. We're basically copying this almost entirely. I would need to split it up for the double thing, wouldn't I? Yeah, I, I need to split it up. Okay. So we got X and Y again. Basically, X and Y. X for Y. So we got that is type like that. And it's type Y. that okay we don't need this anymore I don't think we do that'll be enough no that's why that's not even part of this equation because it should be X like that not templated either get rid of that goodbye So that comes into these, then that redirects back out. Okay. Okay, does that actually work? No, 
that's something else entirely. Apparently it does. Let's just reseal that so I can actually just uh, have a look at it by itself. No questions. No nothing. I did include that, so it's coming through from that. Okay. The other one, one was GLM, which I probably want to basically almost. Almost do the same thing. As this, basically. Uh, copy that, paste it here. Get rid of a lot of these declarations. I don't, it doesn't need to, need to be double anymore. Just, just that. X and X. GLM declaration, which we will undeclare afterwards. We're not doing that, but we are doing include GLM. For quaternions, for the yeah, part of the extension part. Okay. All right, how about that? A whole bunch of types that's not really working out here. Almost, almost. Basically, be doing this. Thank you very much. Get rid of the GLM part. Ooh. Okay, I can save this. Because I can do. Whoops that I think lowercase though mm -hmm. yes okay so that covers all those types go into here gm.cpp Okay, uh, I don't, this looks a bit, I can use this, right? Yeah, I can, I think I can use this. Read optional. Very similarly, again, YAML read, except instead of that, it's YAML, oh no. Um, That's not going to work anymore. It's just going to be YAML read. <sighs> YAML right required. I mean, we're writing the whole thing. That's true. And it does have color in there, right? Yeah. Okay, can I... I can kind of borrow using these types in here. Pretty sure.
And I should still be able to actually step through this in debugging too. If, okay. This is basically this. YAML, um, almost. I want to add another one for color. So, blah, 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 that, follow that. It's just underscore color. Hold on. GLM that. Be specific. The, the, the double columns is going to be replaced with an underscore. So it's going to be that. First of all, just copy these. Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. I'm going inside, it's going to be, you know what? It's going to be return YAML GLM of GLM type. X, yeah, that's the node, is it the node name? No, that's the type name. Then we get node name, then we get name, then we get data. Same thing as this, except true for the color. And we're going to be instantiating all of these. Then when we try to compile, we're going to run into issues because I don't have the templates available here. But I, I, I will soon. Swear, swear on me mom. Use of un, first of all, yeah, we'll, undeclared name. No name data, sorry. There we go, okay. <clears throat> I need to be able to access the templated guys in here. Because I don't want to have to actually like have multiple functions for each of these types. It's not going to work. And I can't, it's not a macro, it's a template. So I can't do substitution in. Okay, if I make the. If I have like a go between two between the two files here through pod templates, where I say include I just have the, the 
type declarations of that. And <clears throat> that. <clears throat> and I need to just in case uh, we expand this use a little bit someday in the future. Then I include tell me you can see that and then you can link it. You don't. No matching function for call to YAML read. Okay. Z right type name. Um I don't know the type at this point. But I would at this point. I think I would. Okay. YAML type Y. No. Because I'm going to have multiples because uh, int and int32 and unsigned int and U and 32 T are going to be uh, the same thing, overriding each other. That is not going to work. So Okay, another idea. I have a separate one. Define Something like this, X. Okay, so what I'm thinking is template, something like that, you say bool, yaml read, key, Is differentiated enough? Yeah, because this is just node name, not type name as well. Okay. YAML read underscore X. So just compiled down to basically nothing, I hope. and data. Actually, 
we're not even returning anything. YAML write. <clears throat> This is, these are, that's an external instantiation because it's got two different types, but we're not doing the internal. And that's just going to be like that, right? Something like this. Um, I think so. External instantiations are special types, like that have, a, that have the weird double name thing. Otherwise, the rest are going to just be this. of undeclared identifier T. Where are you? T, get out of here. Not great. So, what have we got now? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a vec4, which means it's a float type. Four are arguments, but three were provided. Right, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Got through one of the files. Uh, no function template matches. Function template specialization. This okay. Internal instantiation. This taking in an X with a node name that that it's supposed to then read this, right? Yeah. These are instantiations. What's candidate template could not match bool string string that that against bool string that that okay. Why not? We could do this right up here. Wait a second. No, this, this, and this is supposed to go into this, which then goes, oh, whoops, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's supposed to happen. That becomes x, x. Let's go, no. This would call into that. Which then, yeah, but no. Candidate, template, ignored, could not match bool. Could not match string, string, node, bool to string, node, bool. So now I come upon C++'s template madness. And try to figure it out. No function template matches this. Internal instantiation goes into this, and I'm trying to read this stuff. I go into there. 
and then it's supposed to go to here afterwards. Like, is this just not readable? Like, hold on. What about include uh, templates? No. Well, this is not pleasant. It's like it's just ignoring this one, actually, isn't it? Why? Let's just kind of do this. What is that going to just put it going to break? Let's just see if it's just like the one X. Wait, hold on. No, no, yeah, X to Y type. Candidate function not viable. No known conversion from const standard string star. Const standard string. YAML declaration. Sorry? No known. Okay, what if I just take this out of the way for the moment? Like, this is just not part of the equation, okay? Let's do that instead. Mm. This requires four arguments, but three were provided, okay. Scratch space, what is this? Expand it from here. So that's obviously how the macro is working somehow. It's supposed to go into YAML write that. YAML write bool. So it goes into that, which is here. YAML write bool. This will be bool, that will be bool. And I'm saying, okay, I want this now. Node name, data, node, right? Type node data node yes okay can I just say that too yaml write two okay yaml read two just make it super like obvious
Okay, I don't care about that. Get out of here. Okay, so if I'm expanded from this, YAML write declared here. No function template, expanded from macro instantiation here. Use of undeclared identify YAML read bool. Okay, so I need that. or at least those things to be previously declared. Okay. So I'm, in, I'm inside of here. No function in here. Expanded from this instantiation macro. YAML write x. Okay, no, because that is brought in from this template type name T data const data. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that is brought in by that. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Maybe. Okay, that wasn't it. That was something. And, 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 and. Okay, these are all in line together. That's an and now, so that's no name. That, that. Ampersands all the way. Okay. That still didn't really help me. Const string, const bool, YAML node. Against const. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just a couple of little template mistakes. Huzzah! Uh, so just create the rest of these, please. Uh, so that they can all be linked together very nicely. Very nice. That's all the core basic types for both plain old data and GLM and this intermediate type. Uh, can I actually just kind of put that as internal to make it super obvious. Implement 
implementation actually sounds a bit better. Okay. Twenty twenty two, twenty twenty two. Yep, 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 yep. I added that stuff here. Okay, so that's that's uh, the plain old data and the GLM types dealt with. Uh, next, I would have to be doing Vulcan Vulcan types. I need to re remake those. Can I cheat on those? Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. All right, I'll be uh, right back. Okay. Uh, I was doing Vulcan. Vulcan, Vulcan, ah, Vulcan. Uh, Fix PK, LibYAML here somewhere. Okay. Previously, yeah, no. Um, hmm. Okay, generate code. This is, this is just for VK YAML. So I can keep using that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make a copy of this and slap it into here. And I'm gonna do that instead. So generate code, this is gonna be changed up to be, do I need to, Do I need any historical information for this? Uh, the answer is no. I just need to know what it is now. Uh, so I can do it a little bit. So this, this, I don't care about this stuff. I just wanna make sure that it is. Not quite that though. Go to there, pull it. Then what I'm going to do is a uh, VK struct two, because it's not this, it's going to be struct YAML that um, that XML. We're not going, mm, Structs. Let's see what we got here. There's a lot of types. Do we want to go through? So four.
Vulcan. Reset that. Back up. Generate code. We're going to main. We're going to pull. It's been a while since. Doc Common is not here. It's elsewhere. Hmm. Well, that's not great. Okay, there must be some way. Okay, let me uh, research this. Okay, so in order to import this content, I can, as part of the setup, string of where I am right now. Uh, where do I get path from? Back down to here. String script. Der. So from here, we're adding the path back down to Direct us all the way back down there. We've got to get call in a loader. Till spec from loader. Grabbing that from loader. Okay. Yeah. Yay, nay. Okay. We got something. All right. Uh, generate code. We're going to grab from this none there. Close everything to the right. 
me grab example bits. So we have copyright stuff. That's great. Source file equals this. So what do we what do we need? We need Vulcan. We need that. We're going to include. YAML hard. Get rid of those two. So that'll give us something better. It's not read anymore, is it? Oh yeah, 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 that makes sense. Okay. Um, I just down here somewhere. And I just want to add this to be something like that. So we can also run make on that. So as we uh, slowly go through all the yes. Okay. So how do I deal with enums and bit flags? And that is different as well, isn't it? Hmm. Cute. Okay. Uh, I need to determine whether something is a enum or a bit flag. Let's add those. Mm -hmm. Go through the XML spec roots. We're trying to find four type in XML root dot find all types type if it has a name and type dot get name is the type name that we're looking for. Then we go further and we say if type.get category and type.get category is enum return true. Otherwise we just return. Okay. 
With that in mind, then what we're going to do is... <sighs> I need to save this so I can rerun. It's an inline type, so it's after this, but before the base inline type. So if if it's any an e uh, an enum type, we have a special read which is using the VK. Enums, which I do have, which I can use templates for. Makes things a bit easier here. With the specific type, enum type. Name the formatted name, and then data new data dot member name. simplify it right now Would I have to do anything differently for a bit mask? I don't think so. Maybe. Uh, okay, let's just run that, see what we got. It just never happened whatsoever. Okay, cool. That's going to be under a bit mask label, isn't it? Okay. Um, so I need something else to define is bit mask. Effectively the same thing. Except for Vulcan, it's very easy because I could just say if That's the name. Return true for the moment. Uh, there we go.
Really? Oh, I see. The required and optional bits are... We'll do that too. Maybe I should start up here actually. Uh, read required, read optional. We're not doing default data anymore, that's gone. Optional, great. Right. Get rid of the default data. That, 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 and that. Okay. Why is this no longer valid? gone that whoops Okay, that was it. Required. Why? That's gone. Right, required. Right. Thirty two is gone. Back to here. That is a void. This should be Boolean. Oh, this is just a mess. Void, void, Boolean. Okay. Back to this. Okay.
So go back to the generate code. That's not the one I'm looking for. It's this one. Review over. <clears throat> Genome two. Great. What do you look like right now? Better. Now I need special cases for writing the structure type, reading it rather, ignoring it for writing. Okay. Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay. Struct YAML. If P next ignore. Can I ignore it? For the moment I'll ignore it. So process of regular members. If that continue. Skip it if it's a p next. I need s. I need to go through s types though because I need to add it all on the read side. Yeah, okay. It's just going to have to be simple S type equals this, which is I can grab. It's a part of the XML already. I know that. Roll on down to, let's say, something with. <clears throat> Come on. There we go, it's under values. Nothing to do on the right. Leave that as empty and blank, thank you. Regenerate, let's see what we've got now. Slightly better. We don't have the cleanup here anymore. Well, I need to return. Right. Not for. I find that okay. Find the cleanups. Is this one? No, it's this. Uh, include that covers that. 
YAML read this binding type. I don't have the header yet. So that's why for that. Okay. Let's go ahead and get that going then. Graphics, VK, YAML, H, uh, graphics, VK, structs, I guess, is how I'll put it. So what it's going to become is include VK structs. Uh, VK YAML, VK struts. Why is this extra in C? Oh, that's because it was clean up, right? Get rid of that. Include those. Don't need to do this anymore. Uh, I do need to do this. However, this is local, so goodbye. That on each struct that's available, wherever that is. It's up there. Copyright, clean up um, YAML files. And then this is going to be including Ah. Fine. Uh all right. Sorry, nothing is happening here. Should have included that file. Okay, something is very wrong here. VK struct two. Oh, it's structs two. VK num structs two. get hmm, not very far is the answer so I don't have a VK oh. I need some special types of VK, I don't know, pod, VK pod, I guess, single data. Mm. Yeah, okay. 
Vulcan Vulcan, export that, 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 yeah, okay, I need all this. VK pod. I will copy and paste from here, even though it's probably overkill, but yeah. do the one type which is just undefined that and we're going to have YAML, read VK, rule 32, constant string. <sighs> yeah, basically. Turn YAML read UN thirty two T YAML right UN thirty two T Okay, that's simple enough there. So now VK struts now needs to include that. Sampler, immutable type. Okay, VK struts, this should be a HPP, first of all. Not an H. Do that, then we go back to VK structs, close that up. This is expecting that, that's also not terminated. Okay, there's even less issues now, which is great. Ooh, we still have this. I need the struct compare. Even less of a 
we still don't have anything on that. Okay. What is this? Hmm. What about down here? What's this? YAML read float? You can't read a float or... Attachment account, okay. Oh, right, because um, prefixes are tail types instead, aren't they? Yeah. So rather than uh, on the one I have, where I have like stars like be a, a type attribute of suffix, like this is just a, it's just a tail uh, data of that. So I need to account for that now where type suffix is here so if if what and I need to do that because it's also going to be yeah Is there anything for type prefix? No. I only care about type suffix. That's gone. If It's just type tail. Mm, that's closer. Not quite there. Third would lose const qualifier. Oh, come on. Okay, calls to qualifier issues when reading and writing. So I need to say what? On a type, when I'm reading it like this, I need to say it's a, what is it? Four, zero, one, two, three. It's a three star that for a multi length member for a single length member it'd be something s similar no star I'm just literally oh um would it be reference then this expects L value can I do a, a, a cast to like an and like that Apparently, okay. So all I have left is I need to trim that the white space from the tail because it's grabbing all this as well. I'll bet. Hmm. 
No, that didn't work. Because it wasn't the right... Okay, I'm, I'm getting tired. I'm starting to make mistakes. It's not good. Okay, that's better there. So these are just... This is a handle type. What do I want to do with a handle? Nothing. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with a handle. Uh, I need to determine if it's a handle. Then for XML type, blah blah blah. blah. If that I could do a category right no it's not that it whoops it's not that easy. If I recall correctly, handles all the way up here somewhere. Handle bit mask. Where are ye? Here we go. It's a type and a type, and if I recall correctly, Python does not you do types within like the type. Is within another type. I don't recall it. Um, Python's elementary handles that like at all. But I can iterate through the types, right? Okay, so for here, if we're going down here, if that did not work, uh, category equals handle, okay. For type in find all of that because it didn't close it up. All I have left is this. Is an array, inline array, which I do not handle yet. Okay. It's a tail of name though, so I can work with that. If there's a tail, this becomes it equals or plus equals uh, plus equals for the moment I get a bit weird it's gone okay oh something else is here again <clears throat> oh no, no no hmm 
Hmm. Okay, I can create a special case if it has square brackets. It'll be before this one, though. So. So this is going to be basically the same thing, maybe. YAML read. No, okay, no, okay, just do it. We just jump straight into the four. There's no point to the subread node, is there? I don't think so. Zero, one, two, three. Okay, hold on. Format. Uh, we have formatted member name. We have, I don't know, formatted. That's the formatted member name. That can also be the, okay, no, no, no. So these could be all the formatted ne member name. Do, do, do. Then this becomes the, the stuff between the, tw uh, the square brackets. So type suffix, um, of that plus one two format a type name zero one two so that's two A local member, it's zero node I. Three for the type, the actual draw type name. Reference new data dot member just keeps going uh, suffix or uh, offset I as well if not that then we need to go into the throw so, yeah, no exception. We're looking for this member node. Okay. 
Almost there. Okay, so first of all was the this. Then we've got the formatted type name, member name. Formatted member name, okay. So that was right about there, go. Missing the stuff, the offset on that. And there we go. Make. Let's see what's going to break here. Okay. So that's good. That's good. That's great. Okay. This is generating specifically the VK codes. Generate. DK code, great. Uh, then I want to do what generate regular code for like this shader type, this graphics VK shader type. This is going to be much more similar to the other types. I haven't done that. I haven't done any of the others actually. Copy of that. Okay, code. okay, bring that over. Close the, all those. Ba, 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 ba. So one, two, three, four, five. Regular struts. Struts. Clear that, clear that. VK YAML export include Vulcan. No, not part of this.
it Shader or Shader HPP? I do not recall. Get out of here. Wrong one, wrong one. You, Shader H. I would have a clarifier. I do need that. Uh, this is not an extern C type. Struck YAML. Okay, this looks incorrect because this is the not the right types I am looking for specifically that one get out of here okay 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 Fo graphics VK YAML VK structs two it's structs two not one it's a second gen okay that's better I need the exception for oh, well. I need to also include that directory so I can get these things corrected. The compare, right? Mm, almost. Well, yes, I'm using the correct uh, comparison. I just need to actually include the compare. So now I need this. Okay, now I just gotta do the read. I just gotta get read and write for this function. What are we doing? Almost three hours. Hmm. Okay, so this is the built in descriptor set. So this is core graphics type. I do have YAML, but it's the old style. So 
can I just uh, do that? Like that, there and there. Kind of do just a copy and Okay, first of all, read should be first. So we'll do that. Secondly of all, do a copy of that like this. kind of like put them together almost to do like a enums yaml or something dealing with those cases as well now i guess um maybe or just leave i don't know regardless this going back to this this needs to include that it was this run that got an extra thing you gotta go through okay that's good Make sure it's all going to build together, which it won't because I'm missing some things here. Okay, it all builds through. Just do copy paste. Copy, cop, cop, copy. And paste. So yeah, about the same, but we need to go into here, grab these, put those in that place, so that, resource YAML export, do 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 do. Want to do all that? I don't think we need all that. We just need to go back to graphics resource. Then 
we got to go graphics. We don't need that. We need that. Don't need that. But we do need uh, compare. I think. Compare and cleanup. Cleanup is first. Compare. Structs to exception. Plain old data. We don't need that. Maybe. Let's see how that's going to work, if at all. Nope. Okay, cute. What we got? Got to start with this. This is an unknown type, which would be true. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Back to here. So we got to include. Graphics resource. Okay. I need all of these guys. I need something for reading and writing. Resource IDs, okay. Structs and structs to <laughs> so that should just be down to the resource IDs. Okay, we've got things for compare as well. Plus, it's just a regular C header. Okay, and we're just down to if it's an external pointer type, then it needs to be pointer or pointed to object when doing the copy. So here should be like that. So back to resource IDs. Okay, what we've got now cannot initialize. Okay, this is a what? Cannot initialize a parameter of type I'm just missing standard lib. For the mem copy. Yeah, almost. String .h. Now it's just ID types. Okay. 
and whatever this is. PK items again. I don't don't have it. Okay, well, at this point, it's pretty much, from this point on, it's pretty much automatic. Like, I'm just going to be do doing a bunch of fixes. I'm going to fix up the, the tests. I'm just going to keep doing this for all the other types. But it's going to basically be, the, say, this continued, continued on a whole bunch of different types offline. And i got to fix up the resource ID. And hopefully, it's already been three hours. I'll probably spend another couple hours slowly slogging through all this. And next time I'll come back and I'll be focusing on the binary read and write stuff, autogen instead. Because this is pretty much there. It's just refinements and slight bug fixes and stuff. So, yeah. And that's super boring. So until next time, with hopefully this all being done and fixed, cheers.